and I'm Christy Casciano. And I'm Jeff Kulikowski. Thank you so much for joining us on a special edition of News Channel 9 at 530. Such an important conversation we're going to have tonight. We're going to be looking at the cost of turning diesel-powered school bus fleets into zero-emission fleets. The state's mandating districts be fully zero emission by 2035 and will only be allowed to buy these kinds of vehicles starting as soon as 2027. Electric seems to be about the only option right now. So joining us to talk about this mandate is Central Square Superintendent Tom Colabufo. Tom, thanks for joining us. And Onondaga Central Superintendent Rob Price. We appreciate both of you being here. Thank you. We're going to start out easy first. So we're going to do some... Uh, Rapid fire lightning questions. Round. Lightning round. I call it the lightning round. So here are the few quick, and we just want you to answer yes or no to these. Uh, first question Are you opposed to alternative fuel vehicles for your school transportation fleet? No. No. Not opposed. Number two Do you have any electric buses or vehicles on the ballots next week? No. No. Okay. And third question Do you have electric vehicles in the fleet right now? No. No, we do not. No, no, no. Okay, well, that wraps it up. No, now it's time for a little bit of a deeper conversation. Right. But we wanted to get started just to, you know, let people know you're not opposed to this idea, but you certainly have concerns. So, um, Tom, I'm going to start with you. What is your biggest concern right now as we get this conversation going and we get a little deeper into this issue? I think the biggest concern is going to be the... The, the, the infrastructure that's going to be required to be able to pull something like this off, especially for a district that's over 200 square miles like I have in Central Square that encompasses three different counties, Oneida, Oswego, and Onondaga County. Right. Uh, Rob, what about you? What did you say was one of your biggest concerns? My biggest concern right now is the cost. The cost mm -hmm. of the electric bus is about three times the cost of the gasoline buses that we have on our ballot for next week. Let's talk about the cost because, you know, I, I heard from a viewer, and this is one of the questions they have, they hear there is funding out there and you have to ask for it. It's there, but you're not doing it soon enough. What do you have to say to that? <clears throat> the funding process takes a little bit of time. Um, Onondaga Central is seeking funding uh, for the assistance in pur purchasing the buses. You could get anywhere. Some school district could get 100% funding, right. and then other school districts would just get a partial funding um, to offset that cost of, you know, around $400,000 for an electric bus versus a 65-passenger bus equipped with a similar equipment, which is going to be around $150,000. Mm. So how do you, let's stay on this cost, because that's obviously a big one, Tom. Like, how do you, um, I don't know what your district would get as far as possible uh, funding help, but how, how do you pay for this? So all school districts, we bond for buses. Okay. So every, every year we take six large buses off of our fleet. We trade them in that have anywhere between 85 and 100,000 miles. Mm -hmm. And then and also three smaller vehicles. And then we add six new big ones, three small ones. So at Central Square, we've got about 65, uh, 65 to 66, uh, 65 passenger. Those are the yep. large buses. And then we have about 30 smaller buses. And then we have some other vehicles, sub Suburbans and whatnot. But again... Everything would have to be electric at the deadline at 2035. Um, and so for us, it's the whole, it's looking at the cost. So yes, we may be able to get some grants and get a handful of buses. And so a bus in the research we did was 200, it was $458,000 compared to 177,000 mm -hmm. diesel bus. So even if we were able to say, let's say get 10 buses mm -hmm. uh, that are electric, what's going to happen when we need to get the other 50. Right. And so with that cost, as uh, Mr. Price said, it, it's about three times higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't you eventually get that cost back because you're going to be saving money, right? With diesel costs being mm -hmm. so much more than electric. There's a, so. there's a potential, um, but we have not seen, um, we're working on fleet studies now, but for a fleet study that entails um, the cost benefits of uh, going from gasoline and diesel to electric, we haven't mapped that out yet. Right now in the process, we're mapping out um, what our fleet study looks like for what type of charging systems we would have, and then um, how much electricity each of our school districts is going to need. Yeah, I think that's the, the next key thing. We can't have yeah. electric buses without electricity. Right. Um, how well are you set up, um, Rob, since you were just talking about the electricity, um, for an electric um, school bus fleet? 
for the whole fleet, we're not set up mm -hmm. uh, to accommodate a whole fleet. Um, we don't have any charging stations on campus now. Even if we were to purchase one or two buses in a couple of years, we would have to build that into the infrastructure. Yeah. Tom, same thing. Like with your needs, you I feel you said about 65 in the fleet. You got a large, large district, so you're going to be doing a lot of charging for sure. Correct. And what we've already done is we already had a fleet survey done, right? A company, mm -hmm. Girardin, did it, and they recognized we needed 4,000 amps. National Grid wrote us a letter that said, we looked at your study, we can only provide at the very most 3,000. Mm -hmm. So there's the potential that we may end up having to get a large diesel generator to be able oh, to wow. power all of the charging stations. Wow. And, and I did, um, you know, full disclosure, talk to National Grid about it. And, and they said simply, you know, every district is going to be different. And while they might not be able to meet your full fleet needs today, Possibly they could in 10, 11 years. Their point was, we want to work with districts now to start this going. And that's very much what we heard too. Yeah. All right, I got a question for you. So it sounds like we have a lot of great ingredients, but it needs more time on the stove to cook. <laughs> How are you going to make the deadlines? Except by the governor. Well, and, that, and that's the thing is we can't use a broad stroke approach. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the deadline, if you look at a district like Central Square and other rural uh, districts that span as many miles as we do, we really need to look at that and say, okay, what, you know, what really is feasible? Mm -hmm. So there are some routes that, given the parameters currently, what we have with electric buses, they're not going to be conducive for that. So maybe if the governor and state education department could look at that and, and look at our constraints, they could possibly say maybe 60% of their fleet would be able to be doable. Because then we can tell our community, our taxpayers, we are going down the road. It, it is doable. There are... You know, there are things being put in place for the infrastructure to be able to pull something like that off. Hmm. Um, Rob, I got to ask you, I mean, with 700 plus school districts across New York State, um, what is the supply? If everybody wanted to rush right out there and start buying electric buses, how well can manufacturers meet the need? And I know we're talking phasing this yeah. in over 11 years, but I mean, those years will go by fast. Right. We have manufacturing questions as school districts of whether uh, manufacturing is going to be able to keep up with the demand just from within New York State, not even across the country, mm -hmm. that are um, looking to add electric buses to their fleet. So that's, that's a question we have. So roughly 50,000 buses will be needed. Wow. All right. Are there other options for zero emission? Hydrogen fu fuel We're cell. We're hearing that, yeah. so and, talk to us about and, that. So, and most that I've read about this is the Toyota Motor Company is doing a lot of research for their um, personal cars. And if that technology is around the corner, that's another alternative for school districts and manufacturers to produce buses with the hydrogen f fuel cell. Mm. But if you start going yeah, down the electric right. road and hydrogen, I mean, there's always going to be a next thing, right? right? So you can't just say, we'll keep waiting, but that certainly adds right. another fly you, in the ointment. Right. And that's one switch? of the reasons why yeah. we hit the pause. I mean, yeah. there may be people out there, and I don't want anyone to think that the districts that aren't going to have a separate proposition for an electric bus don't care about the environment, because right. we do. Right. But we also care about the financial situations of our communities, and we also want to make sure that we don't go so fast that may maybe it is hydrogen cell, mm -hmm. and that's the way to go. So so we don't want to go so far in one direction in the next two years and then realize how quick everything's changed. How equipped are, so we've talked about um, cost, electricity, infrastructure, things like that, building, you've talked about lifts for these heavier buses. Um, what about your mechanics in your district? Do they have to be schooled up on this? How will they be able to fix them? How different are they from diesel buses? There, there would be some training on the mechanics. You know, one of the advantages they say about electric buses, it's less maintenance, hmm. uh, but you're dealing with a considerable amount of electricity in each of the batteries that our uh, bus mechanics have not been trained on. Mm. Is there any also concern about weather conditions here in yeah. Central New York? I was listening to an interview by uh, it was some bus drivers in Rochester. They ha already have a couple of electric buses. They were saying that they didn't have any trouble. They also like the buses because they're so quiet. Yeah. and they can hear all the children on the buses mm. and that's a good thing for bus drivers to have. But um, is there concern about weather with electric buses? Because our winters can get rough. Uh, with the battery temperatures and the constant need to keep the batteries around 70 degrees, uh, and when it gets down below freezing, the um, loss of electricity mm -hmm. and the range of the buses is a significant concern. And whether it's for just a day-to-day -day trip to get kids back and forth to school or an athletic trip or another extracurricular activity trip, those, those are questions we have 
and you know there's some school districts that's going to be able to test that mm. interesting okay we're going to take a break for right now uh, we have asked you to send in your questions to ask rob and tom we're going to do that we're going to take a break jim teske will be in with the weather forecast then we'll come back and answer some of your, your questions Welcome back to this special edition of News Channel 9 at 530. The cost of change converting to electric school buses. Our guest, Central Square Superintendent Tom Calabufo, Onondaga Central Superintendent Rob Price. Well, we know you have questions mm -hmm. because you've sent them to us, so we want to start with this one. It showed up more than once. Yep. What would electric school buses mean for extracurricular activities, especially sports? You know, I had two kids who played hockey, our buses traveled. Yes, and so I'll give you an example. So last weekend we sent our track team to White Plains. It's roughly 286 miles, four hour trip. If that was an electric bus, it would have at least had to charge four times. Mm -hmm. So we would have to literally try to plan those routes to try to figure out where those rapid charging stations are. And if we got there, what do we do if there's two or three more buses that are in line? If a, th if a bus is down to 30 to 40 percent, it takes two hours to mm -hmm. charge it. So that is a concern. Wow. Um, here's another one. Uh, there are various questions uh, related to batteries. How long does a last charge? Tom kind of hit on that a little bit, Rob. Uh, the impact of the cold, we've talked about that. And then what's the lifespan for these batteries? Uh, how long will they last before you have to buy new ones? We're, we're hearing right now from industry that the warranty on the batteries are five to six years. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to last longer, but um, with the cold weather, that's the piece that everyone has the big question, is what happens in the cold weather. And Rob, what happens to the old batteries? And what about the diesel buses? Where do they go? The diesel buses are um, uh, sent for scrap. Um, they can't be reused under some of the incentive programs mm -hmm. that are out there. They have to go to scrap, and there's specific things you have to do to them to make them unusable before you turn them in. Um, and then the batteries, you know, there's recycling programs. I don't know on this volume, um, you know, for regular car batteries and household batteries, there's recycling programs, but on a scale for buses, that's something we would have to learn about. How, how about. different, how different, not just the batteries, but the, the doing away with the buses, electric buses versus the diesel buses, what, what kind of differences? Like, what do you do with a diesel bus now? Where does it go? We trade them in, okay. so yeah, so we're on a rotation every yep. year. We get right. rid of uh, 10, we put 10 on. Right now, we, they, they allow us to bond for five years, but yep. with diesel, or sorry, with electric, it's 12. Okay. But if the bus only lasts seven years, we're gonna be paying, we're gonna still be paying for a, the, the, the additional years of that 12 years. All right, we know there's a mandated right. timeline. What happens if you don't meet the mandates? That, that's a question that superintendents and school boards have is, you know, what happens if we don't meet the mandate? And then the other question is, what happens if the community votes down our uh, proposition for the buses, for the purchasing electric buses? Th those answers haven't been um, answered yet. So many unknowns. Yeah. Um, Tom, maybe time for, um, for one last one uh, in here. Um, wh what, do you, what do you do collectively, or what are you doing collectively to get your voice heard? Rob talked about that legislative breakfast, but is that enough? What more can be done? Well, there's done? a lot. So the school yeah. boards, um, uh, we have our normal conventions, and at the last school boards, there were a lot of uh, board members that were asking these very difficult mm -hmm. questions. They wanted to be able to get answers, so then they can go back to their communities, their, the voters, and say there is an overall plan being rolled out. Unfortunately, with so many unknowns right now, I think the community, I know our community wanted to to hit pause yep. and we wanted to see with the technology is it going to be hydrogen mm -hmm. is it going to be is it going to be electric and then we can really plan and look at that and have a, a, a really good you know goal moving forward mm -hmm. okay uh, we're going to take one more break we're going to come back we're going to let you guys kind of wrap it up I'll call it kind of closing arguments I guess for lack <laughs> of uh, a better term so uh, stay with us we will be right back <laughs> just a couple of minutes left we are never going to get to everything on such a dense issue but hopefully this helped educate some of you at least from the school standpoint okay fellas let's uh, let's end with a couple of these first off um if we've all said we want to get to this point how do we get to this point where we're zero emission fleet for the first piece Tom had brought up earlier about the infrastructure 
uh, every school district is going to have to take on a capital project to get the infrastructure in so the charging stations and the electricity can be delivered to the district. Tom, is it as simple as just moving that, that deadline out or kind of changing the formula of maybe some hybrid or 60% based on a formula by 2035? Like, how do we get to that end goal right. eventually? You, we have to get you, there eventually. And do you collectively say... We need more time. Yeah, I would say the first thing is extending that deadline because we bond for buses that we can have a long-term plan. Mm -hmm. But I think the other thing is to be able to help us with the capital project mechanism and how we do this because we're all going to need a capital project mm -hmm. to be able to pull this off. So both of those in conjunction will be needed. Got about 60 seconds yeah. left. So you keep talking about capital yeah, projects for electric hurt. school buses right. and infrastructure. What about if you spend so much time and effort and money on yeah. that and you want to put a new science wing on 100%. it or a cafeteria. Or capital projects. The, the capital no. project money is for the infrastructure unless there's grant money coming for infrastructure mm. for the um, electric buses that's going to be taken away from renovations and upgrades to instructional areas. Because you can only, Tom, take on so much so debt, much, like right. legally And then speaking, when the debt right? service comes off, that's another time to do it. We can't even do another capital project until 2027. Oh. So that pushes us. So for a large-scale uh, infrastructure project to, to pull this off, we're still a couple years from that. Mm. Right. And so for the voters who are heading next week to the polls yeah. who don't see electric buses on the ballot, we just helped you understand why yeah. there's so much that we have to understand. Right. Well, we head to the ballot, so this will help you. Yeah. Tom Calabufo, Rob Price, we really appreciate your insight on this issue. And I, and I can say, I think, um, honestly, that you speak for a lot of the superintendents that I have heard from, you have heard from. So it's not just Rob and Tom's opinions. Uh, there's a lot of the same sentiment out there. So a lot of the same issues yep. everyone's dealing with. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, we are going to go to a quick commercial break. We will be back in about 90 seconds with News Channel Line at 6 o'clock, right after this.